Oh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to participate of this web seminar. And I will discuss today how high resolution scanning in microscopy reveals new details of cell non structures. Uh, usually, all microscopies have some dreams. And uh, I include here the most important ones. One is better resolution. Of course, if I want to see details, I want to see nano structures, I need equipments with good resolutions. We also need to have a high depth of focus because if this nanostructure is part of a more complex structure organization, I need to see it in the perspectives of the three-dimensionality. Nowadays, there are several microscope approaches that could be used to observe small structures, independent if it's a biological or non-biological structures. And in our group, we have tried to use all these approaches that goes to low resolutions, but that allow us to observe the whole animal in our case, since we work in the biomedical sciences, but moved also to resolutions of nanometers or sub nanometers, what is very important for the area of nano sciences and nanotechnology. Even light microscopy allow us to reach resolutions in the order of 10 to 20 nanometers. Recent developments in light microscopy areas, especially in the fluorescence microscopy areas, with uh, uh, the development of STED or GSD or structure illumination microscopy, allow us to obtain resolutions down to 20 nanometers. And this is very important in biology because we can use a fluorescence microscopy to visualize very small structures. In this example here, we have cells maintained in culture and these cells were infected with a virus that causes the disease called Zika. Zika virus, uh, which appears here in green. These virus are being detected here use antibodies against some of their proteins. And when you go to a high resolution image, you can see individual green dots here that I, in the arrows point here, you see that we can identify each individual virus that by transmission electron microscopy appears here as these dense dots in a transmission electron microscope or using high resolution scanning electron microscopy, we can observe this small virus uh, on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. That is the place where this, uh, this virus are assembled. Each individual dots corresponds to a virus particles and sometimes they aggregate in two or three or four particles form a particle complex. This means that even uh, fluorescence microscopy in association with scanning electron microscopy, we can visualize very small particles in the range of 50, 60 or 100 nanometers in diameter. If you goes on to high resolution microscopy that you detail a little more in a few minutes, one new microscope that's called the helium ion microscopy, 
where we have a, a, a kind of scanning IO microscopy, we can visualize even smaller particles that I am indicating here, that is in the range of 30 to 40 nanometers that belongs, that's part of the assembly of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, the virus that causes uh, COVID-19. So that's, uh, this could be visualized by high resolution scanning microscopy. One way to improve our knowledge on the nanostructures is not only to see each individual nanostructure that is relatively easy if I have these structures in an isolated form where I can put it in a grid or a substrate and observe it, but any of the conventional types of scanning or transmission electron microscopes. But most of the times, especially in biology, we need to see the nanostructures not isolated, but in, in situ as they are forming biological structures. So this means that I need to have a three-dimensional view of these nanostructures. And nowadays it is possible to use different electro microscopy and IO microscopy techniques, both transmission and scanning to obtain a three-dimensional organization of nanostructures. In this slide here, I present two types of possibilities. One is to have a knife inside a scanning microscope, and this knife can expose one surface that I want to analyze. And then I can do some successive cuts on the surface. The other possibility is to use a gallium IO source, and this gallium also removes nanometers, 10, 20, 30 nanometers thick slices from the surface of the sample. And in all cases, we can observe the successive planes of focus of the structures that we are observing. So that I have hundreds of images of successive images of one given surface that can be reconstructed using uh, computer techniques. One of the techniques we have used more frequent is the focus IO beam sources associated with a scanning electro microscope. So that in this case, we can take out surface as thick as five nanometer. This is wrong, it's not a millimeter, it's a nanometer. And if we do this by sequential removal of the surfaces, so that all the surface that is exposed here in a block face, I can obtain direct images from this surface. And if I do this, I can look cells, a large number of cells. This is an example of parasites that are placed here so that each individual one corresponds to one parasites that if I increase the magnification, I can observe these organi cell organizations with the nucleus, mitochondria, different structures, and even I can observe structures such as the endoplasm reticulum uh, and the microtubules that are located here at the periphery. What I am looking here is the structure around 200 nanometers. So it's relatively big structures, but we can obtain more details about it. As you can see in this image, I can go into the cells and look for the organization of the Gauge complex, mitochondria, microtubules, and so on. 
I can even do the tridimensional reconstruction. I'd like to show this example here where we have a sections of the cells. You see that this is a movie where I am take images, successive images of each plane of the surface. And I am at the same time doing a three-dimensional reconstruction of these structures. And as shown in these images, what we are showing to you here is the distribution of each individual subpellicular microtubules, so that it was possible for the first time to identify each individual microtube that has a dimension of around 200 nanometers, but also to go into the extractor, the inner extractor of each of these microtubules, I, as I will show you later on. But in any way, this is the first time that I can see the three-dimensional distribution of each individual microtube. I can also look for inner structures where the DNA molecules are present. This is what we call the kinetoplast of trypanosomatids that are pathogenic organisms that cause important diseases such as Chagas disease, leishmaniasis, African trypanosomiasis, etc. So that I can see the kinetoplast that inside the kinetoplast I can look for the individual DNA molecule. So that I am talking here in structures around three to four nanometers uh, of diameter. So it is indeed a very high resolution organization. Or I can go deep on if I use cryo sections and observe the material uh, frozen in a frozen state. I can see here a series of individual microtubules and all these microtubules I can see the individual molecules that constitute the microtube. Each of one has a dimensions around two nanometers. So this means that I am going really on the inner organization of one microtube using high resolution scanning approaches. But I would like to discuss here in the last minutes I have the use of the high resolution IO microscopy. This is a relatively new microscope or IO, where instead to, um, to have a, an electro beam to make the image, I am going to use a ion beam. And this ion beam is obtained from a filament conventional filament, but it's surrounded by a helium gas. And with the ionization, what I have, it's uh, the projection in the lens of the microscopes of uh, helium. And this helium has some advantages because it allows a much better resolution than the electro beams due to the difference of the wavelength associated with an electro beam or associated with a helium ion beam. In addition, there is a tremendous difference in the depth of focus, so that this is the depth of focus observed in a conventional scanning electro microscope. And you see here three times more the depth of focus in a ion scanning microscopes. And when you do this, you would like to show here some examples of structures that we have examined using this kind of microscope. In this case, is one protozoa, Giardia intestinalis, is a protozoa that causes giardiasis, where use a conventional EM technique we can identify the two nuclei of the, this protozoa in a series of structures that appears here, estriated structures. When we move for this high resolution 
microscope, what we can see, we can, we can start to, to identify individual structures like we have here are tubular structures that form what we call the adhesive disk of the protozoa. This adhesive disk is formed by a special structure that is organized in such a way that allows the parasites to attach to a substrate. The substrate can be a glass slides or plastic surface or even the intestine of the animal that is infected with this protozoa. If we move to higher magnification, what we can start to identify a series of structures that we cannot see them using conventional scanning electron microscopes. Why? Because in the case of the scanning electron microscope, we attain the resolutions in the order of 0 0.8 nanometers. And in order to obtain a good scanning electron microscope image, we have to coat the surface with some metal, like platinum or platinum palladium or zinc, zircon. We, can, we need to have a very thin metal layer so that the electron beam can cover the surface can pass through the surface without any electric discharge. If you don't coat, there is discharge and then we don't get a good image. Well, but if I put something, some a metal layer on, a, on the surface of a biological structure, there is the possibility that I can coat some very small structures, non-structures that are coated by the metal layer. And so I cannot identify these structures when I look in the microscope. One advantage is of the helium ion microscopy is that there is no dis electric discharge. So I don't need to coat. I don't need to put anything on the sample that I am going to observe. Therefore, this significantly increase the resolution of the microscope. And now, instead of 0 0.8 nanometer, we can achieve 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 nanometers. Therefore, some structures that I don't see using the scanning electron microscope, I can see using the radio IO microscope. This is a kind of examples where you can see here in the inner structure of the, this protozoa giardia, I can identify very small structures, very small dots that appear here. We still do not know the nature of these dots. We are trying to identify which proteins are make these structures using different approaches that I don't have time to uh, discuss now, but of course, I can answer any questions related to this. This is, a, again, a new view of the cytoskeletal of the Giardia, where now I put colors, artificial colors, to identify or to make it more clear different cytoskeletal structures of this protozoa. And you see here, there are a set of microtubules. There are substructures of the microtubules, and I am dealing here with structures around 100 nanometer uh, uh, in diameter. And uh, we can have here a subset of very small structures that I am showing here that are structures also in the in the range of 50 of 50 nanometers. And I can have a very good depth of focus in an image such as this, so that I know what is located more anterior or what is located more in the posterior region of the whole structure. So that what we are doing here is what 
we call now the nano visualization of elements in the whole cells, not isolated molecules or isolated complex, but in the whole intact cells. Uh, and of course, for biologists, this is very important to have images that show these structures as a whole. And the last example I'd like to show here is related with another protozoa called Toxoplasma gondii, that is the agent of toxoplasmosis. It has parasitic diseases distributed throughout the world. And these parasites, Toxoplasma gondii, is able to infect a different kind of cells and survive inside the cells and multiply. This image is a transmission electron microscope that shows here when uh, uh, epithelial cells infected with the parasite. The parasite is located inside a vacuum that we call parasitophilus vacuum. I have one parasite here, another parasite here. There is a, here an arrow which indicates the presence of a nano tubular structures located inside the vacuum. This nano tubular structure uh, is now being characterized in some details use different morphological techniques. And one way to see these inner structures is to expose the inner portion of the cell so that we have cells that are cultivated, infected with the parasites, then they are frozen or are fixed using uh, fixatives such as glutaraldehydes, and then the cells are broken. And then the inner portions of the cells can be visualized. And when you do this, the image we have using the radio ion microscope is like this one. I have here one, two, three vacuums. In each one, I have one parasite. I, we can identify the parasite number one, number two, number three, inside the vacuums. Here is the cytoplasm of the host cells. And when you look at this at more high magnification, is it possible to identify the parasites here? Here I have more, one, two parasites and a network of tubular structures located inside this vacuum. You see that these structures are really in the range, in the nanometer ranges, and it's very difficult to visualize them. If I put, if I coat this sample with platinum, I don't see very well this uh, nanotubular network. I can see it, but I cannot see details about it. On the other hand, use the radio ion microscopy. They can be clear -like, visualized. And in my last image, I would like to show you how clear we can see these, uh, these, these structures. Here is the surface of the parasites. Here is the surface of the inner membrane. And you can see this organization of these nanotubular structures that comes from the surface of the parasites and goes in direction of the surface of the vacuum, the inner surface of the vacuum, and form here a very complex structures where substructures can be visualized using this high resolution microscope. I'd like to acknowledge all members of my group working at the Rio de Janeiro Federal University. Here is my address, email address for any uh, questions that you want to say. And I'd like to conclude stating that now is it possible to use high resolution scanning microscope techniques to visualize non-structures per se, but also non-structures form more complex structures, larger structures. But in any way, it's possible using three-dimensional reconstructions 
to obtain uh, images that allow us to have a more or a much better idea of the structural organization of different biological uh, materials. Thank you very much for your attention and I am open to answer 